This week, engine cooling on the boat 79. We look at how the engine is cooled and the systems it uses. We take apart a pump, show you a few tips and tricks, and we look at other parts of your cooling system. Okay, let's dive in at the beginning. Now, not all cooling systems are the same, but basically, they work in the same way. Let's explain. Water will enter the system through a through hole and a valve, or through a drive leg and a valve. Most boats will look something like this. The seawater, or raw water, will then be drawn up into a seawater filter, something like this. It's important to remember at this point the seawater is being drawn or sucked into the pump. The seawater pump can be gear driven, belt driven, or in some cases even the electrically driven. And they look something like this. The location of your seawater pump can vary depending on your engine. Some are on the front, some are on the back, and some are even on the top. Wherever your seawater pump is located, it's important it has an anti siphon valve. In most cases, that will look something like this. From the pump, water will be pushed through the inner core of your heat exchanger and that will look something like this raw water or salt water goes through the inner cores and the outer jacket has the engine coolant around it hot coolant from the engine is pumped by the coolant pump into the heat exchanger this is called by the salt water in the inner matrix and then returns back to the engine cooler coolant pump on some engines is called the circulation pump and there's also a thermostat in this circuit which controls the flow of coolant. It's this exchange between the coolant and the salt water which gives the heat exchanger its name. The now hot seawater is pushed into the exhaust elbow. We've done a couple of other videos where we covered the problems around exhaust elbows and the water injection. I'll put a link in the uh, description. The hot seawater and the exhaust gases will be pushed down the pipe into something like this. A muffler or water lock. Some boats have a separator which separates the exhaust gas from the raw water. This allows them to run a dry exhaust from this point forward. Now in addition to the engine heat exchanger, some engines have an oil heat exchanger which cools the oil. It works on the same principle. You can pause the video here to familiarise yourself with the different components within the cooling system. So the engine's cooled down a little bit now from where we ran it up earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the raw water pump off. It's on this engine, it's on the front, and it's gear driven from the end of the cam. And the first thing we're going to do is actually release our raw water filter lid. Um, that will allow any water that's trapped in there to run back down the leg or back down to the water pickup, and it will prevent any water from siphoning into here. We're still going to have a little bit of water in this pipe because between that and that there's uh, probably a cup or so of water but we'll be able to take that out of the um, bilge sump there which is nice and clean now with the Aquavac. So let's just take that off. Oh. Take a strainer basket out as well. There we go. And the first thing we want to do is to release these clips from the top of the pump. So that's one. Move it up out the way. and then when, whenever you release a hose here's a tip don't just pull the end of it you want to twist that hose and break the seal and there we go that one's twisting and it's coming off quite easily 
a little drop of water in, the, in there. I'm just going to allow that to dribble down into the sump there and take it out later. So it's virtually stopped now and I'll take the, do the same with the bottom one. We'll get our shop vac in there and clean that all out and we'll wipe it all round as well. Get rid of any salt crystals. I'm just going to grab that with a piece of cloth, twist it. And there it goes. I'm going to move this pipe back out the way. We've got four um, six millimeter thread bolts, and of course, a six millimeter is a ten millimeter spanner. So we can either put a socket on those or we can uh, use a spanner. I'm going to use a ring spanner. So as I release this last bolt, I've just pushed a piece of uh, rag underneath the pump because when that comes off there's going to be some oil and that just gently, little wobble, there you go and out it comes. Let's get this on the bench. So here's our pump, I'm just going to wipe off some of the oil and the next job we've got to do is to release these six screws which hold the faceplate on And then just to get this plate off, just a gentle tap, and off it comes. Okay, I'm just going to empty that water in the sink. There we go, and there's our impeller. So the next thing is to take the impeller out. Okay, this impeller has been in here for about a year. What we're actually going to do now is take it out. Now you can use a proper impeller extraction tool which won't damage the impeller or you can just take two screwdrivers and gently lever it up and then it will come out easily and effortlessly like so. Now the thing if you're going to do that is just to be careful of the edges of this bronze on the pump and what's this impeller like well it's in pretty good condition actually no cracks no crazing all the lobes are there yep that's in pretty good condition let's have a look at the face of our pump that's not too bad a little bit of wear there just a tiny amount of wear there and then the cam which is this piece at the bottom here just look at that there's no wear on that so that's all pretty good the only thing we have got that's a problem as you can see we've got some oil coming out of here and that's come from out of the engine past that lip seal and then dripped out of that gap so we need to take this shaft out and to get this shaft out there's a circlet behind here and we need to pull this gear wheel off of here to get at that circlet so the first thing we need to do is to get this nut off the top here so to get this uh, to get this off the end of here you just simply need to hold now it it won't be that tight, I can probably hold that but 
to if it if it is really tight you need to hold this in a vise with some rags or a piece of wood on there but I think I'm probably strong enough to get that off oh maybe not So a piece of rag around there. And off that comes. And then there's a washer on there as well. A split washer. Which acts as a spring and keeps that tight. And the next thing we've got to do is get our hub puller and pull this off of here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put that nut back on there. You can see that. Just with my fingers. Like that. So the tip doesn't come off. Damage the edge of the shaft just in the centre of that spindle and this is a tapered spindle and we literally just put a socket on there and this will go with a bang come on that's it, it's gone They usually go with quite a bang. Oh, come on, there we go. Inside here is an internal circlet which springs outwards and holds this shaft in that position. So what we're going to do now is just get the circlet pliers and remove that. So reaching down inside with our circuit pliers making sure we've got the end of the circuit which is extremely difficult to see in this light and there we go that's the that's the circuit out There we go. So we now have the circlip out, you can see that in there, and this shaft will now push back out through the pump, like that, and there we go. The bearings look good. lip seals, the back one's quite warm front one's very tight let's get this cleaned up so I've changed our camera angle slightly so that you can get a better view and cleaned up the shaft carefully with some very very fine 1500 grit uh, emery cloth um, what I did do was I put some tape over this bearing so that we didn't get any in there and then I've just flushed it out with some WD-40 there's a couple of things that you need to look for one is that these bearings turn freely and there's no spots on them you want to look for what's called end float in the bearing so I'm pushing and pulling this bearing here there's nothing, no movement there and none there, they turn nice and smooth and I'll put a little drop of oil on those before I put them uh, back into the pump but the next job to do is to clean up the face plate here and to clean up the pump and the screws 
Now you've seen me do this before. Um, the only thing that we're using that's different this time is I'm using a flat scalpel which I've just honed and we'll just go over and remove any gasket just nice and gently like so a little bit there and then we'll do that all the way around the face plate and then what I'll do is I'll take some emery cloth on this flat board and just lap, lap this in by rubbing in a figure of eight. It's not that badly worn, in fact it's very lightly worn so it won't take much to bring it back. But I'll, uh, I'll clean these two off camera and show you the finished article when we're done. You can see that's bringing that up. That there's there's less than a thou in there. I can just feel it with the tip of my nail, but it's enough to show. And that is good enough. So that's the bottom done. You can see there's a tiny tiny groove in there but it's I can just feel it with the tip of my nail okay so that's sufficient now that's really I could keep going but it's it's pointless now the other thing is there's a there's a, a tip here with this particular pump if this face was worn very badly, um, what we can do is we can flip it over and use this side. All we've got to do is clean this up and just hone it down or so that the Volvo stamp comes out and you can then use the other side. So there's a tip for you. If, you, if your pump is symmetrical, like this one, the faceplate is symmetrical, just flip it round. That's ready to go. We'll take the pump now and we do exactly the same on this surface. Okay, we said we were going to go into a lot more detail, um, so here's some more of that detail. This cam squeezes the lobes upwards, so that as the lobes of the impeller go round, they're compressed and the water is pushed out of the the um, out of the pump. And we've shown you how that works before, so I'm not going to go into all that. But you can buy. A replacement cam. So it's often a good idea just to set your spare cam on the top there and make sure that you've got the same thickness when it's in the same position and that you haven't got excessive wear on this cam. And as you can see on this one here, there's nothing in it, absolutely nothing in it. Now the cam is bolted in through the bottom 
with one of these screws so taking that off is fairly easy you just release that screw take the cam out and replace it with a new one so just one more thing before we put this pump back together that you'll notice that there is a bit of wear in the back of this pump now if your pump gets worn these housings are quite thick at the back you can take the cam out and then you can have your local machine shop put this on a rotary table and just take you know half a thou a few tenths out of the back of the pump on a milling machine and you don't need to buy a new pump so uh, there's another top tip for you let's uh, let's get this pump back together use a socket to push the lip seal into the pump body before pushing the shaft in makes it a lot easier I'm just going to put a little drop of oil in there just to help those bearings when they first start turning because obviously this is all splash fed from the inside and lifting the body of the pump I'm now going to flip this over and to make it easier I'm just going to stand that on there gently like that just to make it easier now we now have these two parts to go in the first one I can't remember what they describe it as in the Volvo manual but basically it throws any water or oil outwards and it's then just held in place with this little tiny o-ring so we just carefully drop those in this time we take our trusty socket and this is actually the next size up which is a 21 millimeter a little drop of oil on that lip seal just on the inside edge the spring on the back faces the inside of the pump just gently push that over very gently there we go now in order to get that in evenly I'm using the next size up socket and using the flat end I'm going to push down on that and that oil seal, sorry that lip seal is now back in position and it's flush with the back of the pump because the socket won't allow you to push it any further in so there's another tip so for now you. we're going to go back to the other side of the pump and just take that gear wheel off and put our circlip in there now you'll get a new circlip in if you buy the kit they're, they're quite tricky to go in sometimes and you simply put that on your circlip pliers drop it down the hole and just make sure that it is seated in position it and you should be able to rotate the circlip just a little bit to make sure it's in which I can and now you can lift this up and it won't come out now that's your circlip that drops back on there just push it on nice and hard and then our split washer goes on there and on this nut I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite um, it's not strictly necessary but I do like to see a nut with a bit of Loctite on it there just in case this decides it's going to unwind itself because if that nut comes off inside the uh, inside the engine you've got a world of trouble so let's just put the Loctite on and we just nip that up and I'm just going to go and put this in the vise and tighten it up with a torque wrench and then I'll come straight back to the table and show you the rest of it 
Okay, okay, I know. Well, it's 25 minutes now and we haven't looked at exhaust elbows and how they work, or how they fail. We also haven't looked at any detail of through holes and valves, how the water gets in your boat. But that's for next week. So until then, from me, Sid, and of course Mr Oscar, sail safe. And lots of water coming out there, and lots of growth on our boat again. But yeah, that's all working fine. <laughs>